Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. For this JavaScript tip, let's assume you want to create a function that will retain data so that you don't have to send the same data every time you call it. That data could change, so you don't want to hard code the data into the function, but you don't want to send it each time you call it either because you're calling it a number of times. Let me give an example of what I'm talking about by looking at a function I have created. So here in this code, I've got an array of scores. And let's assume we have lots of these. We have a lot of scores that we've received, and we need to determine whether the score is pass or fail. Well, this function does it for us. We pass in the array, and we pass in the threshold. Basically, anything greater than is a pass. So this function returns an array that has either pass or fail in it for each of the elements that are in the scores array. The way I've chosen to do that is using the map method of arrays. Basically what map does is return an array based upon the elements in the array that is passed to it or the array that it is acting on. And map is a higher order function, so we have to pass in a function to make that happen. And that's what this function does. Basically, it checks to see if the element that's passed in from the array map iterates over each one of those elements. So as the element, as it's passed in, if it's greater than the threshold, then we return pass. Otherwise, we return fail. So that's how that's working. So now back to the problem. Let's say we have a bunch of scores, a bunch of arrays that we need to do this with. And so basically, we're passing in this 80 over and over and over again. And there seems to be no reason to continue to pass that in. Now, we could set up a variable inside this array with 80. But then, when the 80 changes, we got to come in and make a change to that. So it'd be good if we could just pass the 80. And it could retain that value. And then we could continue to send in the arrays until we're complete. Well, let's look at how we would do that. And this technique is referred to at times as partial evaluation. So the basic idea is, is we're going to create a function that will receive the threshold, and then it will return another function. And then that function will process the scores. And because the return function is part of the scope of the outer function, it will have access to that threshold. So let me set that up and then I'll explain how it's working. Let me just copy this whole thing and that's what we'll use as a starting point. Let me remove this. So this is the outer function and all we're going to pass into that outer function is the threshold. Now, what it will return is another function. So before I finish it, let me illustrate how we would use it, because that sometimes helps with the understanding. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to declare a variable here, pass 80. And this is going to contain the function that is returned. And so we call determine pass, and we pass in the threshold of 80. Now, this function can now be invoked for each of the arrays that we have. So we could do this type of thing and pass in scores. So that's how we'd use it. And then we'd continue to pass in additional arrays as we have them to get them processed. All right, I'm going to comment that out, and we'll finish up this application here. So we want it to return a function. And that function is going to receive an array, an array that's passed into it. And then what's the function going to do? Well, it's going to do exactly what we were already doing up here. So I can simply co copy that and paste it in. Now, when you see all these return statements in a row, it gets a little bit confusing. But remember, this first function, the determine pass function, it's only returning this inner function. The rest of the return statements are just the functionality needed to return an array that contains pass or fail. 
as we described up here. So the first time we call the term pass, it simply returns a function. Now, the interesting part about this is that this returned function is going to have access to the threshold variable that was passed in. So we pass in an 80 here, and then when we invoke the function here and everywhere else we invoke it, it still can access that 80 because of closure. So this return function is a part of the same scope as this function. And threshold is accessible as a part of that scope. And so since they are a part of the same scope, it creates closure over that and it can access it for as long as this function remains in memory. It basically keeps a pointer to this value as long as this function is alive, even though this function has executed and has finished. So that's why that works. So let me go ahead and save that. And let's go see and make sure it works. We'll go ahead and refresh and then I'll open the console. And let me look at result. There we have pass, fell, 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 pass, pass, fell, fell. So it worked great. And we could simply change the threshold by calling determine pass again with a different number. And then we'd have another threshold we could compare against. And what it saves us is passing in that threshold every single time as we go through multiple arrays. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. Now in this particular tutorial, we covered a number of other concepts. I've included links to tutorials about those concepts in the description section, so you can refer to them there. If you'd like to watch another tutorial right away, go ahead and click on the link in the center of the screen. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, click the link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. Or if you're ready to dive into full courses, you can visit our website at allthingsjavascript.com where we have numerous resources on JavaScript. Thanks for watching.